Welcome back, folks. In this video, we're going to talk about summary query concepts. I know we've talked about summary queries before, but it's so darn important that we understand these things that I'm going to spend a little bit more time on it. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and get started. I'm here in summary queries.xlsx and I'm in the summary concepts tab. So in case you missed it before, summary tables are the fundamental thing that DAX produces. The DAX engine exists to produce these summary tables. What are they? These are the things that provide the summarized data that Power BI will draw as any number of visuals. So anytime you see a visual on a Power BI page, that visual is a, is a representation of a summary table that the DAX engine sent to Power BI, right? Summary queries, by contrast, are the request forms that Power BI sends to the DAX engine in order to get a summary table that it can draw as a visual. These are also known as DAX queries. So if I've got a visual on a page, imagine I've got this visual over here, right? Uh, how did I create it? Well, I, you know, I clicked on the little visual button and then I dragged a dish into the access and I dragged type into the legend and I dragged my quantity sold measure into values and it produced this bar chart right here and it, you know, behaved exactly as I expected it to. Well, how did it get here, right? When I finished dragging these things into the access, the legend and the values, Power BI scanned the page to look at slicers uh, and any other filtering sort of behavior on the page. Uh, and once it was done with that, it said, okay, I now know uh, what the uh, summary table needs to look like. I can't create it, the DAX engine creates it, but I do know uh, sort of the shape of it. And based on that, it's going to write a summary query that might look something like this. And says, if I want this visual, what I'm going to need is every combination of dish and type. And for each one, I'm gonna need to have the quantity sold. And by the way, here's how you calculate it, right? So uh, Power BI will write this and send it off to the DAX engine. The DAX engine receives it and says, I can create that, right? And it takes this summary query, this order form, and produces this summary table with every combination of pasta and type. And for each one, it's got the quantity sold, right? And with this information right here, uh, it sends, gets sent back to Power BI and Power BI can then draw it as this visual right here or any other, other number of visuals. And if you'll notice, right, like where does that six come from? Well, that is uh, burger nine in, right? Well, I'm sorry, burger to go. Well, there's burger to go six, that's where that comes from. How about that number right there? Uh, three for pasta, well, this is dine in pasta. And if I look for dine in pasta, well, sure enough, we get three right there. How about that little segment right there where we get uh, to go pasta, right? Well, if we go to go find to-go pasta, quantity sold is two right there. That's where that two comes from. And lastly, you sort of see where I'm going with this. Where does that one come from for salad, right? Well, that is dine-in salad. Notice the color of it. And that, it comes from this row right here, right? Salad, dine-in, quantity one. So this information here in the summary table is being drawn as this visual right here, right? This is what DAX produces and sends back to Power BI to draw as uh, any number of charts. Okay, now... Um, I'm simplifying a little bit here, but I think that's probably good for an introductory course. Most often, most often these summary queries are written using the summarize columns function, which has uh, several different argument sections, right? The first section is the grouping columns. These are the columns to get all the combinations of, which I often refer to as the breakdown, right? So if we wanna have um, a breakdown where we've got all the combinations of dish and type, right? Here in this summary query, we need to have dish, and type. So these first two arguments here are the grouping columns. What am I going to get all the different combinations of? Okay. Next comes external filters. Now, uh, we don't have anything on our slicer selected, so I'm going to go ahead and skip that till we get to the next example, right? Uh, in the next example, it'll become sort of more relevant, right? Because we've got no slicers, there are no external filters, so we don't have that section here. What we do have, though, is our measure column definitions. And these are a little funky because these come in pairs of arguments. Notice there's an argument, a comma, and there's another argument, right? These argument pairs consist of the name of the measure column and the instructions for going to calculate it, right? So uh, here in this example, we know we want the name of it to be quantity sold, which is why it says quantity sold right there. If this text string said bananas, it would just say bananas right there, right? And then comma, the second part of that pair is the instructions for getting it. Well, in this case, the instructions are whatever the instructions are in this measure for quantity sold right there. So whatever the definition of this measure is, is gonna get evaluated for each one of these rows to go get the quantity sold for that row, for that row, for that row, and for that row, okay? And based on that, uh, it'll generate this summary table, which can get drawn as this visual, okay. So what happens, what happens when an end user selects uh, some things on the slicers? Let's say they click on burger and then they control click on salad. 
So when they do that, they would expect that the visual change, and sure enough, it does. It changes to look something like this, right? Uh, but why does it change? How does it change? Well, Power BI detects that a user has interacted with the report, and therefore, uh, we need a new summary table to reflect that new slicer selection. So what it does is it rewrites uh, the summary query to include all that slicer information. So here in summarize column, the first two arguments are still our grouping columns, the same ones we had before. But now we have this middle section where we have external filters, right? External from the tile coming from uh, this slicer right here, or maybe coming from a report level filter, or maybe coming from uh, a pie chart that we clicked on a slice on, right? Cross filtering, okay? Any of those kinds of behaviors get included in the summary query in a line that looks somewhat like this, right? So here we're gonna say, hey, uh, in this summary query, we want to include a filter for dish is either burger or salad, right? Or if we had just clicked on pasta, the filter would look like this. Dish is uh, only pasta, right? And if we had multiple slicers, we would have multiple lines right there, each line reflecting one of those slicers, one of those external filters, right? And because we've got that external filter, when we go to create our breakdown, we just get all the combinations of dish and type, assuming there's a filter for dish is either burger or salad, which is why we don't have any pasta rows right here. Uh, other than that, it's the same behavior. For every single row, we go create a column called quantity sold, and we get the value for each cell using the instructions in this measure. So we get uh, quantity sold there and quantity sold there, which can then be drawn as this visual right here, right? Same as down here, right? When they click on pasta, it rewrites the summary query to include that filter for dish is equal to pasta, right? That becomes a filter. And so the summary table, when DAX produces it, there's only pasta rows. There's no burger or salad rows, which is why we've got pasta and pasta, right? And again, uh, when it's done doing that, it's going to add the measure columns. It's gonna be called quantity sold. That's why it says quantity sold right there. Uh, if this was bananas, right? This would say bananas, right? Whatever it says right there is what the name of this column will be. The instructions for getting it here are the second uh, half of that pair of arguments. It's the quantity sold measure, which is defined in our data model right there, whatever the instructions are in there, whatever the code it is that got typed in, we'll get evaluated for that row and for that row to produce these two numbers, right? Uh, and based on that, Power BI will then redraw the visual looking like this, okay? So that in a nutshell is how uh, summary tables and summary queries work. Summary tables are the thing that DAX produces, it's what gets drawn as visual. Summary queries are the instructions for producing them. Uh, they have three different sections in the summarize columns function. The grouping columns, right? What are the different uh, columns we're going to group by? What are all the combinations we want to get? Uh, the external filters, anything from slicers or cross filtering or page or report level visuals uh, that get introduced right there. And lastly, the measure columns, which are pairs of arguments where we have the name of the new measure column and the instructions for getting it, right? So DAX gets these summary queries and almost instantaneously, very, very, very quickly produces summary tables, which then get sent back to Power BI to get drawn as the visuals. Okay, so I think that's it for concepts. I think we're ready to go have a little bit more fun with this. I'll see you next video.